mental health uh, is a big initiative started by the NBA today. I've been talking to Jamar, talking to Kevin outside on the court. What does this do for you in terms of help, helping your players? Well, I think it helps the whole league. I think it's something that uh, our society uh, as a whole, uh, you know, mental health is something that affects all of us in different ways, different relationships, and, you know, in all of our families. So I think that initiative is huge by Kevin and by DeMar speaking out, speaking up, and, and making it real, um, you know, because, like you said, we all, we're all affected by it. But it helps uh, to be able to uh, address it in an open way. I think the league is doing a good job of making it a priority uh, and also making it, uh, uh, you know, I don't know the word to use, but um, to, to make it easy for people to speak up. I think the, the stereotype is if you speak up about mental health that you're weak and it's not the point. And I think that's what the league is trying to do is make it easier. Because uh, I'm sure there's a lot of guys in our league that have those issues that are just not, um, you know, feel free enough to speak up about it. In years past, especially in sports, coaches would punish players for being, for being weak and soft. And again, it's a new day. It's a new day from that standpoint. Uh, I know my philosophy and my thought process has changed even when back in my days when I was a player to, uh, you know, to today, you know, if you back then when I was in college, if you drink water, you was weak, which is the dumbest thing that ever, <laughs> ever we could ever do. But and just same with mental health, uh, you know, it's that's not the case because, again, we have to be empathetic uh, with with people who we feel like may have issues and understand that there's. Uh, more to it than just uh, basketball. Coach, you guys got the <clears throat> game one monkey off your back in round one. How important is it for you guys to come out and set the tone in the huge. series? Huge. It's, it's really huge. It, it's it's big, just as it was last series, come out uh, with that confidence and the, the intensity and the, and the uh, you know, the fight that you got to have in game one. And again, uh, we saw it last night with Philly and Boston. You know, Philly had been off for a few days, and sometimes too much rest is is not good. So, you know, uh, it, it, the, I thought Boston had the rhythm. <clears throat> they were still in game mode, had the edge. So we got to make sure we come out game ready with the edge, ready to play. <clears throat> what did winning game one kind of do for you guys? Kind of well, hopefully it gave us confidence, Bruce. I hope it gave us confidence, the fact that, you know, you know, to get that monkey and all the hoopla, you know, the, the narrative that, uh, you know, we can't win game one or whatever, for whatever reason off our back and uh, give us that confidence. It would be nice to not have to chase a series in that way, I guess. Well, again, I don't know if our organization's ever, you know, had home court advantage and that's, you know, been where you was up 2-0. So it was. It was good to have uh, that advantage. To, so, to, like you said, to not have to be to lose home court. Again, it's still it's not easy. It doesn't mean that you're going to have a sweep, but uh, you go to their their court with uh, you know some a game in your hand. So um, it's always good to take care of home court. How does it coach feel going into your favorite in this series? It feels good. I mean, I don't know who who's got us favored. Who who has? The books, okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Now we're playing for books, but there they are. That's the scary part. But no, it's 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 uh, it's good. It's it's good. It's you know it's a good feeling. But again, you know, you got to still go out and play the game and take care of business. Is it tough to keep the underdog mentality that you've had for so long? No, not at all. None, no whatsoever. What's well, respect? It's what you build your program for over the last seven years or whatever, because uh, you know that's what you build for. But I've uh, been in too long to to let someone blow. Because tomorrow something happens, the same people in here are going to be coming out. Why didn't you do this? So again, you you have to go out with that mentality that you still have to go out and take care of business, Nathan. And uh, you know it's not easy. You, it's you know you can fall into that trap just like Philly did last night. And my job is to not let our guys fall in that trap or try not to let them fall in that trap. And 
because that trap is easier to fall into than to appreciate and, you know, let everybody pat you on the back and tell you how great you are that you're going to win the series. And uh, the other team gets fired up and juiced up and ready to come out and attack you. So, uh, you know, been in too long not to, to let that happen. Well, we we do. At that time, we have we had a, a veteran group. Uh, this group is different. We're full of energy. We're talented. We're young. So you know the unexpected is there. Whereas with a veteran group, you you know they, you knew what to expect. So it's a difference from that standpoint. But I like our team. It's the best team we've had since we've been here. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean anything unless you go out on the court and take care of business. Well, his maturity level, I think we, we talked about it yesterday, is he was even keeled. Uh, the mistakes he made were, were young mistakes, but yet and still he wasn't phased by the moment. Uh, I thought he rose to the occasion that, that the fact that, uh, you know, he made shots. And, but again, it wasn't the first round of the play, first time in the playoffs that he was overwhelmed. And that, that was a good thing. And the, his growth throughout the year has been great. Uh, and again, you know, he's, he has a cha special challenge tonight that I, I'm sure he's excited about and, and uh, to go out and play, have fun, and uh, to, to, to take on the challenge of guarding probably one of the better players in, the, in our area. Dwayne, how much of a chess match are you expecting with Ty Lue in, in terms of you guys pressing the right buttons? And well, the it, it, it's, it's always. It's Ty Lue, whoever, I mean, it was uh, – uh, Scotty Brooks in the first round, you're always trying to guess what they're going to do and try to stay a step ahead uh, in your preparation or game planning. Uh, we've always done that. It, but again, it's not Ty Lue and Dwayne Casey. It's uh, those other 13 dudes and our 13 dudes going against each other. But again, we, you've been in so long. We, our staff has done a great job of preparing. We'll be, you know, we'll be prepared. We won't, I don't, I don't think it'll be anything new that we'll see that we haven't seen in our years of experience and uh, be ready to react to it. So you're always ready for that. And that's the fun part of the, about the playoffs is the adjustments, the chess match, the uh, predicting what they may do and may not do, uh, the mat making sure we try to have the right matchups. I think that's what this, this uh, whole series is going to be about, our matchups, you know, who's guarding who, uh, and, and, you know, and how we want to guard them. You mentioned uh, your success in, in, in Dallas against, uh, I guess, LeBron. Like, what has changed between, like, like how much has changed? In A whole lot. Totally different. Totally different animal. You know, but at that time, LeBron was still, he was trying to win his first championship. And uh, he's, he's, he's so much more experienced now and seen so many things now. You know, you're not going to surprise him with a zone defense. You're not going to surprise him with a trap. You're not going to surprise him with a lot. Uh, where at that time I thought he was, they were still trying to find themselves and he was trying to find uh, himself in his first championship at the time. Uh, so a uh, whole lot's changed. It's to, you can't even compare. Uh, it's like comparing apples and oranges in that situation. Did you stop trying to surprise him? No, you don't stop trying to, but you're not, you, know, you, you know that it's going to be a, a rhythm breaker instead of a game changer, if that makes sense. Oh, I thought he he was he was a reason. I thought he was a a big reason why they won on on uh, in Game Seven. His energy, his offensive rebounding, his tenacity of going to the rim on his rolls uh, was huge. His defense, I thought he changed the game for him. And uh, you know he's going to be a handful for us. He's one of those guys that plays well against us coming home. Uh, but just his toughness it gives them a a, a different dimension. Uh, in, you know, in the paint. So we got to be ready for our bigs have to be ready to battle and fight and keep them off the boards and and uh, make sure he doesn't have that type of impact on the game tonight. Does that help JV in a way that he's got a pretty defined, uh, you know, if he did, he well, play. he has a matchup. Yeah. He has a matchup. He has a matchup that he doesn't, that somebody doesn't have a distinct advantage where they can run around on the perimeter and, and uh, lose him, so to speak. But I, I would say this, JB is much better at guarding guys like that than he was a year ago. So, uh, but again, it's a, it's a definite matchup for he and also Jakob.
Well, he better be, yeah, because he, he, Tristan didn't waste any time in the game Sunday of going in and having an impact on the game. He was from the, from the jump ball. He was ready to go, and we have to be ready to go uh, the same way with him, with the physicality, keep him off the boards. He's going to probably be a couple of guys to sandwich to keep him off the boards. All right? Thank you, guys.